Sixes dead right drifting out uh, top of the Cotswolds at seven to one, and Gary de Julie at uh, eight to one. Without the two, the four, and the eight, so let's discuss all six of them with Nick Luck. Well, this completes the complement of novice chases here at Cheltenham this weekend. We had the two-mile edition yesterday, won brilliantly by Al Dancer. We had the three-mile race that produced a terrific finish, Malkahi's Hill beating Holstone, and now we have the race over the intermediate distance, and it's a good race as well, and there's the favourite first assignment, who made a deep impression on me when winning at the November fixture last year. He went on and was a, a, a favourite to, to beat no less a horse than Paisley Park in the, the big hundred grand race at Haydock Park, but of course that was before we knew that Paisley Park was Paisley Park, so no mean achievement to finish third in that. Then he kind of levelled off, he plateaued off, Jonathan. This is a pivotal moment on his chasing debut as, as to whether he can take a step forward again. Well, you've summed up his career brilliantly, Nick. And now what you need to do is to tell me what he's going to do today. Well, he goes on soft ground. He was a winner of his only start in points. He looks like a chaser. And he looked pretty ready to me, and I think he's probably got a favourite's chance. Ran in the Per Temps behind Cedar de Burley, ran in the To Be Fair race behind To Be Fair, yeah. who won earlier today. The so to there be he fair is. Fair race behind To Be Fair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as, as he did. Yeah. Uh, first assignment <laughs> for Tom O'Brien and Ian Williams. You know, it's that day where the, where the wet and the cold is just seeping into your bones and what little grey matter I have left. Well, it's... it's it Yesterday is. I said it was the Shell and Festival. I know you did, but it, today it's chilly. Two to one, first assignment. Three to one, Slate House. Now, here's an interesting horse. Interesting, why not? Because he's won a stack of races, he hasn't. But because he was considered to be the second coming two years ago when he won a novice hurdle here and uh, Colin Tizard was purring about him. And it hasn't really happened, but he's had a couple of wind operations, and occasionally he's shown flashes of talent, and he has at least had a few runs over fences, so this won't be alien to him. No, it won't be, and he's been very highly tried in some of them. I mean, two wind operations in the same year suggest that they, they must be you know, getting desperate to try and sort his wind out. Hopefully the second one has. Uh, he, he remains uh, uh, you know, an an unknown talent almost as a chaser. If you've just joined us, a reminder that Secret Investor and yeah. PIM are non-runners here. Yeah, First Whatmore. assignment, two to one, Slate House, three to one. What more also? What more will go to Huntingdon next week to take on Bright Forecast? Go another one is 11 to two for Sean Byrne and John McConnell. A busy boy in recent months. Good record overall. And uh, sent over to win at Worcester and then sent over for an easy assignment at Utoxida and didn't take it. Uh, Everything about the horse suggests he wants good ground. OK, so you're quite happy to stick a line through him. Well, he's also going to give weight to four of the rivals and plenty of it. So that, that, I think his task is hard enough. I think dead right, both on appearance and pedigree, is always the sort of horse that was going to get better as he got significantly older. He still looks a little on the raw side, but he's got a fair, a fair chunk of ability, I think. He does. He's only had seven runs as well. Uh, he, he certainly has to step up on what he's done in two Foss last chases so far. But he ran on heavy ground in a bumper on his mm. debut, and he ran OK on it. So on yeah. that score, he should be fine. He's, a, he's quite a sizeable customer. He is, he is. And I mean, one or two of the jockeys we're talking to saying, although it looks awful, it, they reckon it's probably no worse than soft. You know, that they do ride on much worse ground in the depths of winter. Does it stop raining? Drizzle now, drizzle. Yeah. Top of the Cotswolds, Angus fashioned a case for this horse earlier on. But again, ground is a slight worry. Well, it was soft at Perth. Uh, when he was a, sh a shade unfortunate in third, and he took giant strides during the summer at Stratford. I, I was amazed when he won the second and third of those. We oughtn't to entirely discount Garo de Juillet, surely, particularly given how well Sophie Leach's Vanitor sprung back to form in the two-mile feature earlier. Yeah, I think the handicapper probably had him where he wanted him as a, as a hurdler, and he'll have to do better than he did on his Cartmel debut. They're off. Right, here we go. They're off, racing for the matchbook best value betting exchange. Novices chase, go another one. Uh, takes them towards the first fence. Close up on the outside with them there is top of the Cotswolds in the colour change. They're the orange colours. 
as they jump that uh, first fence. Jumping with them was first assignment there, the meat in the sandwich of those two horses. They go across the intersection and approach the second fence. And top of the Cotswold striding out now. Ahead of go another one with first assignment. And then Slate House back in fourth. Dead right is next. And Gara de Juy at the back of the field as they move down the side of the course already is about uh, what 10 12 lengths maybe between first and last as they freewheel down the hill top of the Cotswolds he's won three of his six starts over fences so far leading go another one he's only been beaten once in three starts over the larger obstacles first assignment debut today back in third place Slate House next with dead right and Gara de Juillet at the back of the field as they come, what an enormous leap by top of the Cotswolds there. <laughs> he gave that one plenty of air. Here's Prick then, racing on towards fence number four here. Top of the Cotswolds, Sam Twist and Davis. Good leaps there by all of them, with the exception of Dead Ride, who got in tight there at the back of the field. Now a slightly longer gap before they get to the next fence. And top of the Cotswolds leads go another one by a couple of lengths or so first assignment racing in third place slate house in fourth and the red colors tracked by dead right and gara de Jouye on the outside just got in a bit tight there gara de Jouye, but nothing to be worried about paddy brennan for sophie leach as they go over the next similar jump that there from gara de Jouye at the back so they're heading up the hill then here top of the cotswolds appropriately named leads by two and a half lengths then to go another one sean bowen in second as they head towards the seventh fence now first assignment three lengths away back in third slate house jumped it well and leaving his hind legs trailing there was dead right made a mistake there fence number seven joined on the outside by garu de Juillet. and as they head down the far side the field still quite well strung out here going towards the first down the back straight the top of the Cotswolds leading it jumped it to the right slightly getting a little tighter there it was go another one first assignment content to take a lead from these two as they go towards the water jump just see Garo de Jouye, Paddy Brenner moving to the wide outside to get a good view of this water as they cross that dead right awkward in the air there dead right and doesn't seem to be enjoying himself so much. He's just trying to kid him along again, Barry Geraghty, as they go towards the open ditch. Top of the Cotswolds, up towards it. Put in a tremendous leap there. There was a mistake there by Slate House, by, I should say, Gara de Jouye on the outside. It's still in touch. Slate House traveling strongly behind these leaders. And two or three lengths back to dead right as they take the last fence over on the far side. And as they took that, Gara de Jouye made another error. Turning left-handed. Top of the Cotswolds. Go another one, first assignment, and Slate House close up in fourth place for Robbie Power. Wider, Gara de Jouye, and losing touch all the time is dead right. Here's the ditch at the top of the hill. What a leap by the leader. Top of the Cotswolds, at the top of the Cotswolds there as he took that open ditch on the far side. Dead right is tailing off, it's almost certain that we could be pulled up in the next few strides or so. Meanwhile then, top of the Cotswolds now being taken on by a rallying Gara de Jouye on the outside first assignments in there with every chance on the inner Slate House and go another one in touch as well and these five race on down the hill towards the last two fences still not jumping that third last today a long run before they get to the home straight then and is only about three lengths covering them and top of the Cotswolds has surrendered the lead to Garo de Juye. look at the way Slate House is traveling though then on the inside first assignment getting a nice run through for Tom O'Brien so they still got a fair way before they enter the home straight go another one is back in fourth place and top of the Cotswolds well held at the back after some spectacular leaps so when they turn in they'll have two left to jump and it's Slate House who's traveling extremely strongly for Robbie Power turns in approaching the last two fences here Slate House comes down towards the second last leading by about four lengths to Gara de Juye. here he comes and what a leap there, he just leads by three, a slight error by Garo in second place, but Slate House is still on the bridle. Ears pricked towards the last, he's just having a good look at it, he jumped it okay, popped it by five lengths. Tired horses here at Cheltenham as they race on up the hill, 
but Slate House is a horse that's got tons of abilities and a lot of problems but he's right back to his very best here Robbie Power for Colin Tizard Slate House wins his first race over fences in tremendous style in second place Gara de Juillet followed by go another one and then first assignment who weakened out of it in fourth the last to finish well they've had to be patient but they can get a little bit excited now I think Slate House, a horse who's always had a massive reputation, with the assistance of a couple of wind operations, has bounced back over fences, and he's absolutely bolted up. He tanked through the race, jumped mostly efficiently, occasionally very well, got, was allowed to get in deep to the last, but he was tidy, and when Robbie Power just shook the reins, he, he bounded up the hill. Memories of his novice hurdle win here two years ago, when we all thought, wow, what's this? And all he's got to do is back it up and keep the wind because he looks very very good when he's on the odd day like this and if there was ground that was going to test his wind it would have been today obviously he'll have tougher opposition but these weren't mugs no by no means and he's laughed at them <laughs> yeah. another good run for the leeches in second we're off to Galway